is tutorial 5, case 1, and I'll be covering steps 7 through 12. In step 7, we're asked to make a copy of the pledges worksheet. We do that by first selecting the pledges worksheet, holding down control, and dragging it to a new position. You can double click and then type the new name in, Q7. In Q7, we're asked to display the individual donors whose amount owed is greater than zero. So when we look at the amount owed column and click the down arrow, one of the choices is that we are seeing people who owe nothing or zero. If we turn that feature off, suddenly we don't see as many records because those who don't owe any money are filtered out. Now they've asked us to sort this by pledge date. So we'll click the down arrow on pledge date and we're going to sort with the oldest record display first. Moving on to question 8, we make another copy of the pledges worksheet by holding down control and dragging it. Name this one Q8. In question 8, we want to display the records that have a pledge date of October through December. So again, clicking the down arrow, the filter arrow on pledge date, I'll turn off all of the months and then just come down and selectively select October through December. They ask us to sort this filtered data by the amount pledged, largest being first. So we'll go from largest or larger to smaller, and that's what question 8 should look like. Question 9 again asks for us to make a copy of the pledges worksheet. To name that Q9. And in question 9, we filter the data to display only records with an amount received greater than zero. So that'll be very much like we did previously. We'll go to the amount received column, click the down arrow, turn off zero, and we see that we have less records showing. Now we're to use the subtotal command to display the total amount received by fund name. Before we can subtotal, we have to do two things. The first thing is that we have to turn off the table mode or convert to range. We can do that in the table tools design and choose convert to range. It's asking for a confirmation and we will click yes. Then you have to sort on the field you want to subtotal on. Since we want a subtotal based on fund name, we will then sort by fund name. Now we don't have our filter arrows, but we can still sort. So if we go to data sort, and we'll just do an A to Z sort, and you can see how Bird Sanctuary, Children's Zoo, etc. are clustered together. Now we're ready to subtotal. You'll find that command in the Data tab. Here's it says subtotal. And what we want to do is we always subtotal on what we sorted on. So we just sorted on the fund name. So at each change in fund name, make sure that that matches what you sorted on. And here we are summing, so that's the operation we'll use, although there are other choices. And what we want to do is we want to subtotal the amount owed. So Excel has kind of taken a guess, and that's correct. That's what I want to subtotal. So I'll click OK. And now you can see we have a subtotal for Bird Sanctuary of 550, Children's Zoo of 325, etc. Moving on to step number 10. In step 10, we're to create a pivot table. That pivot table will display information about each donor type and fund name. So I'm going to base that pivot table off of my original pledges table, making sure that I have everything showing. So I'll choose Insert Pivot Table. I just want to use the pivot table area and I want to place this on a new worksheet. So I'll click OK and over here I have my field tables. Now I'm told to display the total and average amount owed. So I'm going to drag amount owed into the value area. And this gives me by default sum of amount owed, which is OK. That's the total amount owed. But I also need the average amount owed. So I'll drag that field again into the values area. And then I'll click choose value field settings and change it to average. Now I don't like the heading average of amount owed. So I'm going to take out the of and I'm going to take out the two. The reason the two was there is because we have two of these fields in our value field settings. 
go ahead and click OK. Now it's beginning to build the pivot table, but we did want to break this down by donor type and fund name. So I'm going to grab donor type and place it in the row area, and that looks good. And then I'm going to grab fund name and place it in the column area. Oh, I never like a pivot table that's wider than it is long, so I think I'm going to move that fund name to down below donor type. So that looks great. Or I could reverse it and put donor type underneath fund name. All of these are correct ways to do it. It's just a matter of taste, what you think looks the best. That looks good to me with one exception. I don't like the formatting for the numbers. Now I could go to the Home tab and I could do formatting here, but it's really not a good plan because if I pivot or move some of these fields, I may lose the appropriate formatting. It's better when you're working with a pivot table to do your formatting right here. So I'll click on Sum of Amount and choose Value Field Settings. And then I think I'll take sum of out and put total, just to make that clearer. Right here is where you can number format. And I want to use currency. Looks like all of our numbers are whole numbers, so I will reduce the decimal places to zero. I'll click OK, and that's what caused the formatting here. Now I need to deal with this average. Whenever you have an average, it's very likely you'll have long decimal places. So again, I'm going to click on Average Amount Owed. Value Field Settings, Number Format. This time again, I'll choose Currency. I'll leave it at two decimal places. Click OK. Click OK. And you can see that that looks much better. It tells me to select an appropriate report layout and format. I'll leave that up to you to choose. If you click on the Design tab, you will have various styles that you can choose. So I'm going to randomly select one. Now they want me to insert a donor type slicer and filter using the organization donor type. Now if I go to Analyze, you will find the command Insert Slicer. I'll click that. And I'm going to slice or filter by organization donor type. So I'll click here on donor type and I'll click OK. I'll position this slicer right next to my pivot table, and now I can use it to filter. So if I only want organization, I click on organization. Notice how the numbers changed? If I want to see individuals, I click on that. If I control click on organization, I select both. So you can use this to select any view that you are interested in seeing. In step number 11, we are to build another pivot table. Again, I'm going to return to the original pledges worksheet because I want to start with the original table and I will insert a pivot table. I'll click OK and then I'll begin to build it. So we're shown a figure in our textbook to use as a guide and I can see that they use the pledge date as a row heading. It looks like they're using the fund name as a column heading. Now the number that they're actually calculating in this pivot table is total amount pledged. So I'm going to drag amount pledged into the value field setting and while we're here we may as well modify it a bit. I'll change it to total amount pledged and the number format will be currency with two decimal places. And when I click OK, you can see that that looks much better. Now we have one other problem. The figure in our textbook shows this grouped by month, not showing the individual dates. And here's how you do that. You right click on any one of the dates. You choose Group, Months, and OK. And that will condense that and break each one of these down by the particular month. We're asked to name this Q11. That's the end of the video. Be sure to save your work.